Good morning, dear students. Welcome to second session of science class. In the first session, we have started with the chapter nutrition in plants, and in that session, we have discussed autotrophic nutrition and the process of photosynthesis in plants, and how plant performs photosynthesis and what are the major products formed during photosynthesis. Now, in today's session, we'll discuss about heterotrophic nutrition. So, let's begin. so what is heterotrophic nutrition let's see so we have seen autotrophic nutrition so the organisms which can prepare their own food are called autotrophs or this mode of nutrition is called autotrophic nutrition so opposite to autotrophic is heterotrophic so the organisms which cannot prepare their own food are called heterotrophs and this mode of nutrition is called heterotrophic nutrition let's see heterotrophs are the organisms which do not perform the process of photosynthesis and depend on others for their food so the heterotrophic organisms are dependent on other organisms for their survival or for their food heterotrophic plants don't have chlorophyll like non green plants like fungi they do not have chlorophyll and are therefore unable to produce food using the process of photosynthesis so they cannot perform photosynthesis because they don't have chlorophyll we have seen the process of photosynthesis takes place inside the chlorophyll of the leaves so because they do not have chlorophyll they cannot perform photosynthesis humans animals and some non green plants i have told you like fungi depend on the food produced by other green plants this is called heterotrophic mode of nutrition so these all organisms are ultimately dependent on green plants for their food now as you can see the difference between autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition the first difference is food is in autotrophic nutrition food is synthesized from simple inorganic raw materials such as co2 and water like carbon dioxide and water we have seen in autotrophic nutrition food is formed from carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight in heterotrophic food is directly or indirectly obtained from autotrophs this food is broken down with the help of enzymes so heterotrophic organisms obtain the food from autotrophic organisms and digest that food with the help of enzymes in autotrophic presence of green pigment chlorophyll is necessary yes because autotrophic nutrition takes place inside the chlorophyll so presence of chlorophyll is necessary in heterotrophic nutrition no pigment is required in this type of nutrition so heterotrophic organisms do not require chlorophyll food is generally prepared during day time so in autotrophic nutrition plants prepare their food during day time because we know photosynthesis takes place with the help of sunlight so sunlight is available in day time so food is prepared during day time in heterotrophic nutrition food can be prepared all the time because we are dependent on other plants and animals for our food so we can prepare our food any time so heterotrophic organism can prepare its food any time of the day autotrophic all green plants and some bacteria have this type of nutrition so all green plants and some bacteria follow autotrophic nutrition in heterotrophic nutrition all animals and fungi have this type of nutrition so so all animals and fungi follow heterotrophic mode of nutrition now classification of heterotrophs how can we classify heterotrophic plants let's see so heterotrophic plants are divided into four major categories saprotrophic parasitic insectivorous and symbiotic we'll discuss all four of them okay so first is saprotrophic nutrition what is saprotrophic nutrition so you all have seen fungi it is it grows on moist places so the organisms which grow on dead and decaying places and consume its nutrition from dead and decaying organisms they are called saprotrophic organisms and this mode of nutrition is called saprotrophic nutrition so let's discuss some plants obtain their nutrition from decaying organic matter so dead and decaying matter the organisms which grow on dead and decaying matter and obtain its food from dead and decaying matter they are called saprotrophs they secrete digestive juices onto dead and decaying matter and then absorb the nutrients from it so what saprotrophic organism do they grow on dead and decaying organic matter and then they secrete digestive juices which due to which they digest the organic matter present in the dead and decaying matter they can absorb that matter easily this mode of nutrition is called saprotrophic nutrition plants that use saprotrophic mode of nutrition are called saprotrophs the organisms are called fungi so fungi the organisms which belong to fungi follow saprotrophic nutrition 
so mushroom mucus rhizopus yeasts are different types of fungi so they they all follow saprotrophic mode of nutrition so they grow on that uh, decaying that and decaying organic matter and obtains their nutrition from there fungi also grows on grow on pick so fungi also grow on pickles leather clothes and other articles that are left in hot and humid weather for long time so for the growth of fungi humid weather is required moist environment is required fungal spores spores means reproductive structures are generally present in air when they land on wet and warm things they germinate and grow so when fungi get useful in a favorable environment like wet and warm environment so they start growing on that place so the spores of fungi starts to grow on moist places so like these are spores so when they'll get useful condition or favorable condition they'll start growing and they'll uh, convert into complete new organisms as you can see mushroom is a type of fungi so so when fungi gets useful environment it grows so now next mode of nutrition is parasitic mode of nutrition what is parasitic mode of nutrition or parasitic nutrition the mode of nutrition in which some plants live in or on the body of other living organisms and get their ready made food from them is called parasitic nutrition so what happens is some plants grows around other plant and obtains the, the nutrition from that plant this is called parasitic mode of nutrition so one plant is living in close association with other plant and absorbing the nutrition nutrition from that plant this mode of nutrition is called parasitic mode of nutrition example cascuta few fungi and bacteria follow parasitic mode of nutrition cascuta which is also called amarbale is a plant which has yellow tubular structures yellow tube like structure which winds around the stem and branches of other trees so what cascuta does it winds around it coils around the stem of other trees and suck it its nutrition from that plant or that tree cascuta or amarbale does not have chlorophyll so it does not have green pigment called chlorophyll so it cannot prepare its own food it takes ready made food from the plant on which it is climbing or on which it is coiling so it takes ready made food from that plant the plant on which it climbs is called host so the plant from which parasitic plant obtains nutrition is called host plant since it deprives the host of valuable nutrients it is called parasite so the, the plant on which a uh, cascuta is growing is called host plant and the cascuta will be called as parasite as you can see in this figure these yellow structures is, is of cascuta or amarbale and it is growing around other green plant and sucking its nutrition from that plant this is called parasitic mode of nutrition as you can see in this diagram also this yellow these yellow structures are coiled around the other tree and it is sucking its nutrition or taking its nutrition from that tree or plant so this mode of nutrition is called parasitic mode of nutrition and the most um, important example is cascuta or amarbi now cobs flower we have also have to discuss about cobs flower very important so the scientific name of cobs flower is rafflesia Re arnoldi it is found in the rain forest of malaysia and indonesia and it is the world's largest flower so in this flower also follow parasitic mode of nutrition rafflesia is a parasitic plant without leaves so it as it does not have leaves it cannot perform photosynthesis so le without leaves stem and roots it has only nutrient absorbing thread to absorb nutrients from the host on which it lives so it has nutrient absorbing thread through which it absorbs nutrition from the other plant or the host plant around which it is growing rafflesia arnoldi is also known as corpse flower corpse means dead body because it smells like dead flesh so it smells very bad like a dead flesh so it is also called corpse flower and it follows parasitic mode of nutrition as you can see in this diagram this big red color flower is rafflesia arnoldi or corpse flower now next topic is insectivorous plants so many plants uh, consume insects so they are called insectivorous plants so let's discuss some plants eat eat insects such plants are called insectivorous plants they trap and digest the insects so the plant the, these plants trap and digest the insects so insectivorous plants are capable of manufacturing carbohydrates 
due to the presence of chlorophyll. So they can manufacture carbohydrate because they have chlorophyll. But since they grow in swampy soil, the soil which has a lot of standing water, which are deficient in nitrogen, cannot synthesize enough protein. So swampy soil have deficiency of nitrogen. So in order to get enough nitrogen, they trap insect. For this purpose, their leaves are specially modified. Example, pitcher plant, sundew plant, Venus flytrap and bladderwort. So these plants trap insects in order to, come the, uh, to come, overcome the deficiency of nitrogen in order to manufacture protein. As you can see in this figure, they are trapping insects. So we have to study how pitcher plant traps insects. What is the mechanism? So in pitcher plant, the pitcher like structure, the pitcher like means cup like structure, as you can see, or a jar like structure is formed, which is the modified part of leaves. So leaves are modified into pitcher like structure. The apex of the leaves forms a lid. The lid is formed on above the pitcher. As you can see, this is a lid which covers the pitcher forms a lid which can open and close the mouth of the pitcher and it opens and closes the mouth of the pitcher as you can see in this diagram inside the pitcher there are here which are directed downwards so inside the pitcher here here the structures are present so to trap the insects when insect lands in the pitcher the lid closes and the trapped insect gets entangled into the hair so as soon as insects and reaches the pitcher so what happens? The lid gets closed and the insects get entangled in the hair which are which are present inside the pitcher. So insect gets trapped because the lid gets closed and the insects get entangled in the hairs which are present inside the pitcher. The insect is digested by the digestive juices secreted in the pitcher plant. So pitcher plant can secrete that meat, some of the digestive juices which digest the insects. And this is how pitcher plant or other insectivorous plants gets nitrogen in order to make protein from the insects. So these are insectivorous plants. Now our next topic is symbiotic nutrition. So symbiotic nutrition, what happens in symbiotic nutrition? Two or more organisms live, live in close association with each other and both of them provides benefit to each other. Means two organisms are living together and they are providing benefit to each other. This mode of nutrition is called symbiotic nutrition so let's see a relationship between two types of animals or plant in which each provide for the other the condition necessary for its continued existence means both the organisms providing the other organism with something which helps them the other organisms to survive so both the organisms are providing something which helps other organisms to live plants gets nitrogen from the soil by the mechanism of symbiosis so plants also perform symbiotic relationship a bacterium called rhizobium plays an important role in symbiotic nitrogen fixation so what happens is in the roots of leguminous plants a bacteria called rhizobium lives so the rhizobium bacteria and leguminous plants are 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 having symbiotic relationship with each other let's see this type of nitrogen fixation is observed in plants like peas moon beans and other legumes so what happens is these are roots so in, in these roots, rhizobium bacteria is, are living over here. So rhizobium bacteria traps the nitrogen which is present in the atmosphere and transfers that nitrogen into leguminous plants. So this is how leguminous plants gets nitrogen. So rhizobium bacteria is providing nitrogen. So it is helping the plants to get nitrogen. In the return, what plants are uh, providing to rhizobium is, there, is that they are, the plants are providing shelter to rhizobium. So plants are providing shelter to rhizobium. They are providing the place for, for to live. And in return, rhizobium is providing nitrogen to the plants. So they both are benefiting each other. So the relationship in which both organisms provides benefit to each other, this is called symbiotic relation. And this is called symbiotic nutrition. This mode of nutrition is called symbiotic nutrition. Rhizobium bacteria live in the root nodules of leguminous plant and provide them with provide them nitrogen in soluble form. So rhizome is providing nitrogen in soluble form. In return, the plants provide food and shelter to rhizobium bacteria. So plants are providing food and shelter to rhizobium bacteria. So they are both providing something or the other to each other. By this process, both bacteria and plant gets benefited mutually. So they are, they are providing mutual benefit to each other. So as you can see in this figure, this rhizobium bacteria is absorbing nitrogen 
from the atmosphere and giving it to the plant. Certain fungi live in roots of trees. So certain fungi also lives in the roots of trees. The tree provides nutrient to the fungus and in return receives help from it to take water and nutrients from the soil. So when some fungi lives uh, in the roots of tree of some trees, so fungi helps in giving water and nutrients to that trees and in return trees provide the place to live to the fungus. So this association is very important for the trees. So in this association also fungus and the trees on which fungus is living both are getting benefited from each other. Now our next relationship is lichen. Lichen is also a symbiotic relationship between an algae and a fungi. So a symbiotic relationship between algae and fungi is called lichen. So it is a symbiotic relationship between algae and fungi. As you can see in this diagram, algae and fungi are living in close association with each other. In lichen, algae and fungi live together. So they are both living together. The fungus provide, provides shelter, water and min minerals to the alga and in return the alga provides food which it prepares by photosynthesis. We know algae is green so algae can perform photosynthesis. So algae is performed photosynthesis so it can perform form its own food. So it gives food to the fungus as well. So fungus gets food from the algae and in return fungus provides shelter, water and minerals to the algae. So they are both providing something or the other to each other. So this is called lichen, a symbiotic relationship between algae and fungi. So as you can see in this diagram, fungi plus algae is called lichen. So this ends our today's session. We have discussed heterotrophic nutrition and the types of heterotrophic nutrition in plants. I hope you have understood. Thank you for watching.